All right guys, today in this video, we're gonna be replacing our concrete gunite pool skimmer. Uh, if you've seen some of our other videos, we've been working on a pretty big pool renovation project. Had a couple of videos of us actually removing the old skimmers. So if you're interested to see those, check out our channel or I'll try to put some links in the description of those videos. Got a couple good time-lapse sequencings of us actually removing the old skimmers. I thought I'd do a little setup here and show you guys kind of everything we're gonna be using for the project today. First, obviously we've got the new skimmer here. So this is a Hayward Skim Master with the square top lid. I thought this was really, I was really excited about the square top lid because we're putting a travertine pool deck in. So I think the square is really gonna look nice compared to the normal just circle top lid. So pretty excited to see how this works out for us. But we've got the new Hayward Skimmer. We've actually got two of them that we're gonna be installing, uh, two of the same ones, square top lids. So the basic idea here is we've got the old skimmers removed. So now there's just a big hole in the pool. So we're gonna set this new skimmer into the throat. And the way, the way you attach it to the pool is a little intimidating for a DIY type person. So I've had a few sleepless nights trying to figure out my approach here and figuring out if I can really do this. But I feel like I've done enough research and I feel pretty confident that we can get this job done and get it done right. Few great resources that I'll include in the, in the description, some articles that I've read, some videos that I've watched to help me kind of learn and base my approach for what I'll walk you through here, all the products I've decided to use. There's an article on Aqua Magazine. It's a two-part article that covers the removal of a skimmer and then the installation, actually, of a new skimmer. There's a great article on Swimming Pool Steve's website where he goes into quite a bit of detail. And he really has a lot of great content on concrete and how to make sure you're bonding concrete right to your old concrete and um, some really good details there. And then in addition to that, there's a few videos I found on YouTube, one from Leaktronics that's been pretty good, one from Ultimate Pool Guy that I've watched a number of times. So I'll try to link to all those in the description here. So if you're trying to do this job yourself, you can go check out those videos and learn from, from what they're showing you as well. So let's just walk through kind of the products and I'll talk about the approach we're gonna take today. So the basic idea of attaching the new skimmer is, first you need to bond it, you know, structurally, mechanically to the pool shell itself. So the way we're gonna go about doing that is I've got a rotary hammer drill and we bought a 5 8 concrete and rebar SDS Max bit. So we're gonna use this to actually drill into the pool wall, the pool shell from the outside. We're gonna drill in at a 45 degree angle about, I don't know, four to six inches. And then we're gonna use those holes to actually insert this half inch rebar into the pool shell or the pool wall. We're gonna then bend the rebar to create a cage around the new skimmer. So I've got a whole pile of stuff, where, I don't know, these are four foot sections. We're probably gonna use anywhere between four and eight sticks. We'll see as we get going in the job, how it comes together and how much we actually need. But this is an extremely important step. You do not wanna skip this. If you do skip it, you're probably gonna have a failure at some point with your replacement. Inserting the rebar into the pool wall, creating the cage around the skimmer allows for that connection to be maintained so that as ground shifts happen, as things move around, your skimmer is not going to be moving any differently than what your pool does, which shouldn't really be moving at all. So we're going to drill into the pool wall. We're going to put our rebar into the pool wall, build a cage by bending the rebar around the new pool skimmer. And equally as important as just using the rebar, you actually have to get it anchored and attached to the pool wall. So once we drill out the holes, we're gonna be using an epoxy to actually create the connection between the rebar and the pool shell itself. A lot of information about this in the articles I referenced at the start of the video. But the most important thing here is once you drill your holes is to make sure you're cleaning out all the dirt, dust, grit, etc., so that your epoxy can actually bond to the concrete and the rebar. So once we're doing the job, we'll really show this. This is a two-part epoxy that you put in a standard caulk gun it mixes as it comes out, it comes with a, a mixing tube attachment that goes on the end of the epoxy tube here. And all these products that I'm showing here, I think, I think all of them I got at Menards. So if I have time, I'll try to link to all these products as well, just so you can go to their website and see exactly what they are. So the epoxy, the rebar, creating the cage around the skimmer. We'll then be using rebar tie wire, mechanics wire, to tie the skimmer to the rebar. If we're gonna be connecting multiple pieces of rebar, we're gonna overlap them by six inches. We're gonna use the rebar tie wire to you know, tie them together. We'll then be making sure we're bonding the new rebar to our existing pool bond infrastructure. So for that, we've got 
solid brass, uh, I'm sorry, solid bare copper wire, and we've got a direct burial bond clamp. So this clamp will go onto the rebar, the copper wire will be attached to the bond clamp, and then we'll connect it to the rest of the bonding network around our pool. Very important step, make sure you're not skipping this. If you're having inspections done, they're gonna be looking for the correct application of a bond um, as you're doing these types of upgrades. Next thing we'll talk about are making the PVC or plumbing connections to the skimmer. So this Hayward skimmer that we have is actually made out of ABS plastic. So, you know, usually you're just using standard PVC glue to make your plumbing connections. In this instance, because we're gonna be connecting the ABS skimmer to a PVC pipe, I wanted to show you two different options here, what you need to look for as you're buying your PVC glue. So specifically when you're joining two different plastic materials, you wanna make sure your glue will support making that connection. We've got two different products. You can see right underneath on the top of the cans, underneath the labels, this one in red is for PVC, CPVC, and ABS. So this should work for us to make the connection between the ABS skimmer and the PVC plumbing. The smaller can in kind of the green color here, it says it's just specific ABS to PVC. So again, this is a transition cement that will allow us to make the proper connection between the new ABS skimmer and our PVC plumbing. So, you know, pay attention to what types of materials you're working with and make sure you have the right products in place so that you uh, don't have a failure down the road. Okay, last things we'll talk about here product-wise are as we get the skimmer you know, in place, we've got the rebar in, we're ready to actually entomb it in concrete. We've got two different concrete products that we're planning to use. One is a hydraulic cement that we're going to be putting a really around where the end of the skimmer throat meets the pool itself. So I'll try to flip it up here. All around this area here, we're gonna pack it between the face of the skimmer and the pool, the hole we've made in the pool, with this hydraulic cement. Hydraulic cement is used as a water stop. It sets up very quickly, and it actually expands as it cures. So the purpose here is to really help reinforce the watertight connection or seal between the skimmer face and the pool itself where it's meeting. So we're gonna use a little bit of that just around the face of the skimmer. Then for the full entombment, so we've got the skimmer attached, We've got it in the rebar cage. We've got it bonded or pull bond network. We're ready to go and, and fully entomb it in concrete. I guess the one step I should mention here that we will also do is we will do a pressure test on the plumbing to make sure we don't have a leak uh, anywhere in the plumbing line from you know, the skimmer all the way back to our equipment pad. You wanna make sure you do that because once you entomb it in concrete, if you find out then you've got a leak or a bad connection, you're basically starting the whole job over because everything is now covered up by concrete. So once we're ready to go, we'll be mixing up quite a few bags of, we've chosen here, 5,000 PSI concrete mix. So this is a concrete that has high strength. It actually says high early strength. So this is what we'll be pouring around the entire skimmer in the hole we've created from bottom all the way to the top of it. This is what will fully entomb and case and close the skimmer with a rebar in place. This is what will be creating the structural bond between the new skimmer, the concrete encasement, and the existing pool. So I talked through all that pretty quickly, but I wanted to give you an overview of just the products we're gonna be using, the general approach here that we're gonna be taking. So with that, why don't we head on down pool side and we'll actually start, uh, start the job, guys. So here, guys, let's take a look here, just as we're getting started. Just so got the new skimmer here. We're looking straight down into the throat. So this is the area we demoed, right? So obviously the old skimmer was here. We used like a small demo hammer, rotary hammer, um, with chisel bits to bust out all the concrete, got it removed. The tiles were kind of already failing here in the throat, so got the tiles off. Um, some of the mortar bed for the tile we've removed. Um, you can see the existing plaster of the pool here. So this is really right where the old skimmer face was attached to the pool. You can see how that plaster is right there. So basically what we'll do, one, we'll make sure we get the height right, so we're going to make sure we get the height completely completely level with the existing skimmer throat. We'll make sure we're trying to get it parallel with with the throat opening in the pool here so we don't want it cockeyed or shifted one side or the other. So we'll get it kind of measured out, all sat in here. And then the hydraulic cement we talked about, that's where we're going to pack all around this face with that hydraulic cement to really fill in that void um, and get it packed full. The rebar that we're going to use, so Basically, the plan is 
we're looking at the pool shell here, we're gonna come down about three to six inches. And then from the side of the skimmer, we're gonna go over about three to six inches. And that's where we will plan to drill our holes to attach the new, the, the new rebar. Then we'll go down, I don't know, probably a, a foot or so and put it the exact same attachment below. So we'll put a piece of rebar here, we'll put a piece of rebar further down. We'll do the same thing on the other side. So we'll put a rebar here, rebar further down. Then we'll, we'll build the cage, wrap them around behind the skimmer, get it attached, get the skimmer attached in here, we'll get it all plumbed up, and then we'll actually start pouring the concrete around it. So that's kind of the basic idea of what we're gonna do. So I think first steps are, I'm just gonna kind of do some measuring. I'm gonna maybe mark where, where I think the rebar needs to go. And then we'll go ahead and get those holes drilled and start getting that cage built. So. All right guys, well there we go. I think those four holes will work just fine for us. The one down here in the lower left hand corner, I was having trouble getting the bit to actually kind of start. I was wanting to jump around on me as you probably saw there. Uh, but we finally got it, so got the four holes drilled. So next up, let's get some rebar and see if we can get it bent up to uh, create the cage around the skimmer. So bending the rebar itself, if you've got a mechanics vise or a bench vise, that's probably going to be a good bet. You can use that with a piece of pipe uh, to bend it around. Unfortunately, I broke my vise, so we're going to experiment here and see if we can figure out a, a way that works to help us get these things bent up. So here's what I'm kind of thinking. We'll get the piece stuck in the first hole. I've got a marker here. So what I'd like to do is just mark the rebar where I want to make the first bend at. And since we drilled these holes in at a 45 degree angle, I'm gonna to wanna to bend this piece down to where when I exit the hole, I can bring it back level and then we'll come and wrap around the skimmer. So we've got our first mark here. Let's take it over. I've got a plan on how maybe we can try to bend it. Let's see if it works. Okay, so here's the basic plan. I've got a set of pallet forks here. I've got one piece of black iron pipe put through the hole on the top here. I happen to have a pallet of wood, scrap trash wood behind it. So I'm hoping this is enough to brace and hold the pipe. We've got this other black iron pipe pushed down that we'll use as leverage to try to actually bend it. So let's see if it works. Hey, looks pretty good. Yeah, I think that'll work pretty good for us. So what I think we'll do, stick the skimmer in there. And since these sticks are only 48 inches, they're only four feet long, I'd love to use the same piece and go ahead and connect into that hole on this other side without having to try to tie two pieces together. So, I think we're fine kind of coming out to here. So maybe from here we can bend, come over this way, and then get bent to where we can go into that hole right there. So I'm just gonna take the marker here and we'll just call this the bend point and we'll see if we can, uh, if we can make this work or not. Um, I tried to capture bending the rebar cage, which proved to be somewhat difficult and frustrating. Um, so most of that I didn't, I didn't actually capture. Basically my approach, I took this piece of rebar and just started on one side. So I put it in the hole, bent the rebar down at about my 45 degree angle. And with the skimmer just kind of dry set in the hole, I took a, a red marker, just a marker, and I just kind of made marks of where I wanted to start making the bends to come around the skimmer. I wasn't sure exactly how it was going to turn out. This seemed to work. Uh, hopefully it'll be okay. But the base of it here, these are just dry fit in there right now. I also went ahead and got the plumber, uh, excuse me, the skimmer rough plumbed. So 
we'll set it down in the hole and it'll actually go in and out with the rebar here. So I think what we're gonna get ready to do is actually connect the rebar with epoxy into the pool shell here. But I just wanted to show you kind of what this looks like all together. These skimmers have two ports on the bottom, one for an equalizer line or if you're connected to your main drain. I went ahead and capped that side of mine because I'm not using either of those. And then I've just got one suction outlet coming out of the base of the skimmer. So you can see it fits in there pretty nice. The idea will be to come off of there and over, over to my trench and over my, you know, follow with the rest of the plumbing to the equipment pad. So I think I've got it figured out where it should work pretty well as I've got it rough plumbed there. And the good thing, I can take it in and out with the rebar in place. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and epoxy this rebar to the pool shell before we go any further. Okay, so we've blown the holes out quite a bit. Because I was using actually the water hose earlier, I cleaned all this off. I looked up on the manufacturer's website of this, and it does recommend the surface be dry for the best strength as it cures. But it is able to be used as a water stop too so it can be used in a wet condition however for the maximum amount of strength you want your your work area to be dry so I spent quite a bit of time with the air hose blowing these out so the holes themselves are 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 very dry right now so I think we can go ahead and get get going with this so plan here is we're gonna do the lower rebar first this is a two-part epoxy it has a mixing tube that comes with it so the instructions say 15 minutes of working time with this. It is a fast setting. And the instructions say to start and fill from the inside of the hole out. So basically we're gonna stick this tip all the way in the, the holes, start filling it, and just pack it full of this stuff, and then we'll get the rebar inserted into the holes. It recommends if you insert the rebar to actually turn it as you go in. I don't know that I'll be able to do that since we're going into two holes with the same piece of rebar. If you use one piece of rebar on each side and then just tie them together, in fact, you could do that, but we'll be, we'll be good, I think, either way here. So I'm in the base of the hole right there, I believe. So we will just start pumping it full. So I think we got it pretty full there. Okay, so let's move on to the other one. So let's see if we can get it to slide on in there. There we go. So the holes are definitely full. You can see it really oozing out. And I'm really pushing to get these pieces to go down in there. In fact, I may go get a hammer and see if I can tap them in just a little bit more. I uh, should have had my smaller sledge down here, but we'll use this big guy. Hey, while we're at this, guys, please no comments about my shorts and boots, all right? Nobody can see me working back here except you all. That's actually tightening it up pretty good. I'm glad we brought this guy over here. Okay, give it another tap here. Okay, so there we go. One piece set, let's move on to the top piece. All right. Both pieces in, let's just do a quick check that everything's still lines up where I can get the skimmer in and out. Yep, looks good to go. Got the rebar in for this skimmer. But essentially we've got the skimmers set in the hole, you know, they're fully plumbed in. I've got them tied in place with rebar tie wire. I've still got some play to move them around as I make final adjustments, get them level, and get them exactly where I want them before we make the pour. Uh, another step that I didn't film, but I did do, I, I cleaned the concrete really well cleaned it with a chemical called TSP, then used muriatic acid uh, mixed with water diluted to acid wash the concrete, then um, neutralized that acid with baking soda, and then did another TSP rinse. And then uh, it's rained since then, so a little bit of mud splashed back up on the concrete. 
So earlier I took the garden hose, hosed off all the mud, got it all cleaned up again, used an old shop vac to suck the mud out of the holes. So we're pretty much good to go with the concrete, but uh, the, your concrete preparation is a pretty important step if you want to create that good bond between your new concrete and the existing pool shell and whatever concrete may be um, left over from your demolition work. So before we pour, we're going to mix up what's called a bonding slurry also. And a bonding slurry is really a a layer of slurry that will paint on the existing concrete or brush on the existing concrete and it's made up of some sort of bonding agent. There are different ways to make it. What we're choosing to use is this uh, ProSelect Concrete Bonding Adhesive Acrylic Fortifier. So it's an acrylic fortifier. It's very liquidy, kind of looks like milk. We'll mix this with Portland cement and water and we'll mix up a slurry in a bucket just by hand. We'll show the steps we go through to do that. We'll show what that looks like. Right before we get ready to pour all of the concrete around the skimmer though, we will take that bonding slurry and just kind of brush it on the existing concrete surface. I've got a couple brushes to help do that. This is a, I don't know, a mason's brush, I guess you'd call it. So we can dip this in, brush it on the surface. Since the skimmer is already basically, you know, installed to get around the, the edges of it and the sides of it, I just bought a really cheap, smaller brush. It's a four inch brush, so I can just throw it away once we're done with it. So our process is going to be make the bonding slurry and apply it to the existing concrete. And then we've got a, a Ryobi concrete mixer that I got at Home Depot that we're going to use to actually help mix up the concrete. One thing I was concerned about was kind of how liquidy the concrete needed to be to get in all the little nooks and crannies and crevices around the skimmer. So in order to help with making the concrete, you know, improve the viscosity of the concrete without just diluting it with more water, which really has an impact on, on the strength. It'll actually weaken the concrete if you add more water. So another product that I picked up, and I've never used it before, so hopefully we have a good experience with it. It's a super plasticizer admixture or plasticizer. So this is a, a powdered, I guess I'll call it chemical or compound, that as we get the concrete mixing in the drum, we'll mix in the appropriate amount of the super plasticizer. And what that'll do is really turn the concrete from kind of that clumpy oatmeal consistency to a much more liquidy and flowing mixture of concrete without compromising any of the strength because we're achieving that, that increased viscosity without adding any additional water. So I'm excited to try this out. We'll see how it works. Hopefully it works well. Um, it's kind of a new, uh, it's a new one for me, so we'll, we'll see. Uh, we're about to walk down to the skimmer, but I, I want to talk a little bit about just my general approach here. So we've got the skimmer set. I mean, that's kind of obvious. We're going to pour the concrete all around the skimmer. And I really wasn't sure what to do where the face or front of the skimmer meets the throat on the pool. So I got some advice, and I think what we're going to try to do, I've got a few different foam products. I'm thinking maybe this is the one that will end up working out. This is just, uh, it's made for an air conditioner, but it's a foam weather seal. It's an uh, inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter, just strip of foam. So I think what we're gonna do is kind of wrap this around the edges of the front of the skimmer. And then um, I've got a board cut where I think we can slide down over the face just to hold back any concrete or pressure. And the reason I wanna do this is to, cr is to create and maintain a, a slight gap between where my concrete that we're pouring around to entomb and encase the skimmer flows up to and the very face of the skimmer. So once that concrete is set up, I'll kind of have a little channel or a gap around the very front of the skimmer. And the reason I want to do that is because I, I have a plan that I think will help me with my actual waterproofing uh, around that face or that seam of the front of the skimmer. And we're going to do two steps to achieve that waterproofing. First, we're going to take a polyurethane sealant. So I've got a tube of NP1 Master Seal. And once our, our initial concrete pour is, is fully cured and set up, we'll go ahead and put a, a bead of this kind of all around the face of the skimmer. Let that set up overnight or for about 24 hours. And then as the final step to finish, I'm going to mix up that hydraulic cement. And we'll use that hydraulic cement to then fully pack around any open areas or crevices around that face and just some of the demolition area between where that face is gonna sit and actually the, the pool side, the throat of the skimmer. 
um, and we'll leave enough room for the tilers to be able to finish with their grout work and tile work as well. So hopefully it all comes together. We're going to go ahead and, and head on down poolside. We'll take a look at, at the current state of the skimmer, and then we're going to go ahead and get started with kind of forming up around the skimmer and getting ready to pour. So come along with us. We'll see how it turns out. Let's get started. What we're going to use is one inch backer rod. Okay. So it's just a, uh, you know, round foam, 10 foot strip. So what I've done here, and I think you should be able to see here. What I've done is I've taken a length of this one inch backer rod and you can see around the face of the skimmer, there's this lip. So what I did, I took my, my Stanley knife, razor blade, and just cut a slit into the backer rod, okay? And what that's allowed me to do is kind of fit that backer rod around that lip on the front of the skimmer face. And I've taken one continuous piece and I've wrapped all the way around the skimmer. And the duct tape, I've, I've not gone behind the foam with the duct tape, so the duct tape won't be touching the concrete that flows up against this but I'm just using it to kind of help hold that foam into place. It's kind of wedged a little bit too, so it's just a little bit of extra precaution. And then in case some concrete oozes through, um, it'll help keep some of that concrete residue from getting on the face of my skimmer. So the reason I'm doing this is to create a gap. So here, let me come around to the back side, and I can show you here. So you can see that foam, you know, comes around the skimmer and the concrete's gonna flow up and pour all the way up to that foam. And once I remove this foam and that concrete's set up, I'm going to have this gap here around the face of the skimmer. And that's going to allow me enough space to use that NP1 polyurethane um, sealant to put some of that in here and let it set up. And then to fully pack around that entire face from the front with that hydraulic cement. Those, it's a little overkill probably. But those two steps combined will really create a waterproof barrier between the poolside and then the skimmer. At least that's obviously the goal of doing it. So we've got the foam on here. I'm going to finish up getting this kind of in place and secured. I'm then going to get my level out, take my measurements, get the skimmer positioned exactly where I want it. Then we're going to get that Sona tube form installed around the skimmer. And then we're pretty much ready to pour, okay? So um, hopefully before too long, we've got some concrete mixing up and we're, we're ready to fill this hole up. So we'll keep going at it and we'll show you how we progress. Okay, so we've got all the foam installed on the face of the skimmer. So I feel like we're pretty good there. Next thing we do before we install the form around the skimmer, you should be aware your swimming pool needs to be bonded and what that means is any metal structure you'd have to check your code but i think it's within a four or five foot radius of the pool needs to be bonded and what that means is uh, or the way you achieve that bond you use a uh, bare copper wire and you connect all the rebar your pool ladders your steps anything with metal in it you connect it and really tie it all the way back to your equipment pad and then you would even bond your pool equipment as well so We've got new rebar here, so what we're gonna use is a rebar bonding clamp. These are rated for direct burial, so that means we can put them underground, we can cover them with concrete. I've got a, a roll of solid bare copper wire, number eight. So I know that I'm gonna have a handrail for my pool over to my right. I know I've got new rebar here. We've got another skimmer to install that's gonna have new rebar. There's a ladder beside that skimmer, so really what I'm gonna do is take this single strand Start it where I think my pull ladder is going to go for my stairs, connect it into this rebar, and then just run it on down to the next skimmer, connect it there. That way we can keep everything tied together. As I did the demolition of the concrete around the pool, I found a number of pieces of rebar that were part of the existing bond structure. So we'll tie into those as well, and then run all the way back to the equipment pad with it. So we'll go ahead and get that done, then we'll get the form in, then we'll come back, show you how it all looks right before we get ready to pour the concrete. So we're gonna go pretty quickly through the next sequence here. You'll see me mixing up that bonding slurry right now. So using that fortifier we looked at, I'm getting it prepped in a bucket so that as we get the concrete mixed, I can be applying it to the exposed concrete up to the level that we're gonna to pour to. 
So we're going to be mixing really two bags at a time, and you'll start to see us doing that now. So we're using the Ryobi concrete mixer. It's really worked out well for us. I'm glad I picked it up. It made this job quite a lot easier uh, than otherwise mixing by hand. So here you can see me. I've got the bonding slurry in that bucket. So I'm just applying it with a brush to the concrete, the exposed concrete area. As the concrete mixes up, we dump it out into a five-gallon bucket and just tote it over, pour it in the hole, and just keep doing that over and over again. I think we ended up using about 10 bags of concrete. As we were going, you know, I was really trying to agitate the concrete, push it down to get it to settle in all around the skimmer as best that I could. Hey, here we are the morning after the pour. All in all, it went pretty well. The concrete mixer worked out really well for us. I think we ended up using 10 60 pound bags of concrete all together. Uh, we were using that plasticizer. I think that's what's created a little bit of the brown tint in the concrete, but uh, I just came down this morning and kind of took the cover off here. And uh, all in all, it looks pretty good. I mean, it's a pretty good solid pour. Foam that we put around the face of the skimmer, I think worked out pretty good for us. It's turned out kind of exactly as, as I was hoping it would, as I ex had expected maybe it would. Didn't have any blowout on the front here, but I did have just some of the, the liquid or the water from the concrete was wanting to seep around. So I ended up just taking some old t-shirt rags and stuffing down to, to kind of block that up. So it, it still ended up working out pretty well for us. I've tapped around the skimmer. Uh, I think we've got pretty good coverage in the center and middle of the throat here. As you tap on that, it's still a little bit hollow there. So some of the concrete must have not got, you know, agitated enough and kind of, you know, shoved in there as we were pouring it. So if I'm disappointed with anything, it would be that. Uh, we've got another skimmer that we're going to pour today. We'll see kind of how it goes. Uh, but all in all, I'd say this turned out pretty well. Pretty happy with, with really the, the entire job here. I've been worried about this for a while. Put a lot of thought into it. Gotten some advice and help from a few other folks. So appreciate, you know, kind of all the help from, I guess, TroubleFreePool.com, swimming, swimming Pool Steve. A couple good resources between those two. So hopefully you found this kind of series of videos helpful. If you've got questions, comments, let us know. Check out our channel and our other videos. We've got a number of them on the rest of the pool project as well as just some other kind of DIY stuff. So feel free to take a look, give us a shout, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks, guys. Hey, guys, quick preview here just to prove that this project actually does start to get completed at some point. Appreciate you sticking around through this video. If you've made it through the 30, 35 minutes, I suspect you wouldn't mind watching one more video that actually shows us completely finishing up uh, the skimmer face. So... I will have one more video on the channel that shows us finishing the skimmer face with the hydraulic cement. And you're interested to see how we truly wrap up the skimmer install. Um, go ahead and check that one out. I'll try to link to it here on the video. But, but hey, appreciate you guys. Please leave any comments or feedback you have down below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button. We'd really appreciate it. And we'll catch you guys in the next video.